Hello everyone, today we're going to be having a look at a more pure version of the new Ishizu support, Ishizu Gravekeepers. Now, I say Gravekeepers loosely, there's not very much going on in terms of Gravekeepers. Uh, mainly Gravekeepers Trap, Necro Valley and the Commanded. But what, the way this deck basically works is you're looking to uh, fully utilize Mudora, which is typically underutilized in a lot of decks, which can special summon itself in your hand by discarding an Earth Fairy. And when it does so, you can activate straight from your deck your Gravekeeper's Trap. Now, Gravekeeper's Trap's a really cool card because once per turn, uh, you can either search your deck for a Gravekeeper monster or an Earth Fairy monster and add it to your hand, which means you can grab your Keldo, Kelbak, Kagito, whatever, uh, but you can also grab Gravekeeper's Commandant. Gravekeeper's Commandant can discard itself to search your deck for Necro Valley. That means Mudora not only can special summon itself out to the field, it can also directly search your deck for Necro Valley. That's really cool. Uh, so that's sort of what the, the deck is aiming to do as consistently as possible. Uh, of course, utilizing the other uh, support. The reason we're trying to do that is between Gravekeeper's Trap and Necro Valley, you're going to completely lock your opponent out of util utilizing their graveyard in any capacity uh, while using your uh, extra deck to just sort of try and beat your opponent down, right? So your Kelbak and your Agito, they're going to be sending all your opponent's cards to the graveyard then Gravekeeper's Trap is going to prevent them from activating the effects of cards in the grave, and Necro Valley is going to be preventing them from moving cards out of the grave. So you're basically locking the graveyard out of the game full stop, which is really detrimental in today's game. There's like, virtually every deck that exists in this current meta uh, has some sort of reliance upon its graveyard and recursion. Uh, even look, look at something as simple as sprites, being able to completely shut down the sprite elf, being able to shut down Ruin and Toten, being able to stop Ibli, because I can't move Ibli out of the graveyard. Uh, even just being able to stop Sprite, which represents at the moment about 30% of top cut finishes. If you're locking out 30% of the meta, that's hella good. And that's just in one matchup. That's not to talk about anything else. That's not to talk about how it shuts down Branded, you know, stopping, stopping them from using their Albion searches, their tragedies, their anything in the graveyard. That's not to talk about how it shuts down uh, certain parts of Sword Souls, although Sword Soul can kind of play without it. Uh, it means that they can't activate the Moe in the grave, they can't banish things for their tie in the graveyard, they can't banish their Tenyus from the graveyard, things like that. It does hurt them, uh, just not as much as it does other decks, but there's definitely a lot of things out there that Necro Valley and Gravekeeper's Trap destroys. So you're going to see a couple of matches here. Uh, a lot of them are, uh, some of them are done casual, some of them are done in dual rooms on stream. So it's a bit of a mix and match. Again, they're not done in rank because this deck is, a, it's sort of missing an end game. Like, this is not a completed list. This is a deck that it's an idea more so than anything else. Uh, it's missing an end game, if that makes sense. The graveyard control is all well and good, but then you need a way to secure the game and finally win, which is what we're lacking on. At the minute, we're relying upon something like Zeus at the moment, uh, a seven material Zeus, which is pretty awesome, utilizing all of the Zodiac cards. Uh, you've got Super Poly to give yourself some powerful boss monsters while wiping out your opponent's board. You've got some Link plays and claims as well. I would probably replace Avramax with something else to be honest with you um, in hindsight after the gameplay but that's generally how it works. I'm going to do a full deck profile at the end so if you don't know what any of these cards do don't worry about it I'm going to cover it at the end of the video. Uh, so if this is your first time around on the channel you want to see more decks like this be it non-competitive like this or fully competitive like a lot of our other profiles feel free to subscribe you know it doesn't cost you anything it does help me out and it, again, it can only be a good thing, right? If you actually do enjoy what you're watching. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get into the gameplay. All right, get into game one here. Uh, we're going to start off with Medora. So we're going to get uh, a decent display of what the deck does here. So Medora drops an Earth Fairy to Grave to summon itself and it activates your Gravekeeper's Trap straight from the deck. Now, on this occasion, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Gravekeeper's Trap to grab ourselves a Keldo, because again, that's another thing you can do. And now we're going to summon a Keldo here by discarding our Carbon, uh, grabbing a Gido from the deck, uh, which is going to give us a little bit of fuel here. We're going to go into Chakanane, and then I believe we go into... There's Hammer Kong. And lastly, I think it's Dryden't. Yeah, we're going to Dryden't here instead. So whenever you're going first, obviously you don't have a battle phase. So what we're instead going to rely upon is Gravekeeper's um, Trap being able to grab us cards consistently here, as well as Dryden't acting as a bit of a pop. So not the strongest of starts, definitely not, but our opponent goes for the Dark World Dealings, which is interesting. Another thing off of Gravekeeper's Trap is you have to discard a card to use it. So we discard the Aguido, 
to grab the Kelbeck, and luckily we hit Exchange of the Spirit. That means our opponent is locked out of using their Graveyard. So anything that is sent to the Graveyard is strictly off limits, and we're playing against Zombies. We're just going to get milling. We mill a Kelbeck, we're going to send even more cards to the Graveyard. We're going to set Infinite and Permanence, because after you use uh, Kelbeck's effect, you can target a trap card from your graveyard and set it to the field. Uh, so we've got an Imperm now that we stole from the graveyard. We've got a once per turn face up pop and our opponent cannot use their graveyard. So this is really, really solid. They're going to draw more cards here. We don't really care. Upstart Goblin gives us a thousand life points, lets them draw. Foolish Burial, they're just sending their entire deck to the graveyard. They're going to Magical Mallet. So our opponent's playing a bit of a... They're playing Mayakashi deck out. So basically this card here, what the, the plan is, you summon this, then you Mayakashi Synchro Summon. Every time you special summon a zombie, your opponent sends the top two cards of the deck to the graveyard. So it's a deck out strategy. Um, and, we, and we're giving them what they want. They do finally dig their way into a Harpy's Feather Duster, which was absolutely insane. Now they're going to go for the Zombie Reborn. I don't think so. We got Medora. Medora's going to bounce back up to five cards back into the deck. Because don't forget, we have exchanged the Spirit in the graveyard five cards back into the deck they've got nothing so this is fantastic for us we're going to we draw on the gravekeeper trap which is pretty nice we normal summon our carbon carbon tributing itself to grab ourselves a keldo from the deck keldo kind of nice we're going to our basically rank up into borbo here tiger mortar then borbo then swinging at our opponent here we got six materials on our borbo which means this is a seven material zeus uh, which is really solid. So that means we can wipe the field three times. It doesn't matter what he summons here. We're going to go Gravekeeper's Trap. Um, and uh, there you go. Game over. They can't do anything about it. Locked out of the graveyard once again. Plus we had the ability to search for something. Insane. There you go. And that shows off the power of how it works. Because again, a lot of players and a lot of decks are going to be playing into your strategy. Don't forget that. That's a def it's definitely something worth bearing in mind. Uh, if you can get that Gravekeeper's Trap face up. Generally speaking, you're loving life. Anyway, let's get in the game too. Alrighty, getting into game two here. We open up with a decent hand here. We do have evenly matched in this version of the deck. We were changing up our hand traps here and there. Uh, we summoned out a Guido, which was, I would say, a little bit of a misplay. I don't really think it served a lot of purpose, but I mean, it is what it is. It's a level four. Uh, we're going to use Mudora here. Mudora is going to uh, discard the other Mudora. And to summon itself out to the field. So that's fine. They're going to go Domain. Denomorphia Kentragina makes her way out. That is fine. Uh, we're going to go Medora Activating Gravekeeper's Trap directly from the deck. We're going to ditch the Kelbeck now to search our deck again. Uh, they're going to activate Trap Trick and Kentragina here. Kentragina then going to Fusion Summon using the Domain that is in the graveyard. And uh, So we're going to need to be careful about that. They're going to Fusion Summon now into Rexterm. Rexterm's going to lock down the effects of any of our monsters on the field, but we really don't care about that, to be honest with you. Uh, they're going to set an Imberm as well, which is fine. They're going to go Commandant. Commandant's going to grab us Necro Valley, but after Kelbeck, mills five from each player's deck. Commandant then's going to grab us a Necro Valley, which is nice. Necro Valley now stops our opponent from moving cards out of the graveyard. That means no more fusion summons for you. Uh, they, for some reason, Imperm are Chakanine, which is fine, right? That doesn't really matter that much. Uh, we're gonna go Dryden. Dryden's gonna detach a material, pop the Rexterm. Dryden's got zero attack, so Rexterm can't negate it. And Rexterm can't summon a monster from the graveyard because of Necro Valley. Uh, so we're gonna swing directly with Borobo here before ranking up into Hammer Kong, then I believe into Tiger Mortar, and lastly into Zeus. So we have yet again a six material Zeus, which is awesome. So we're going to pass turn here. Gravekeeper's Trap during the draw phase is going to grab us. Uh, basically, no, it allows us to try and guess the card at the top of our opponent's deck, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, we don't guess Solemn Strike correctly, but it is what it is. It's fine. Uh, they're going to tribute us for Gamma Seal. I don't know why they would imperm us if they were just going to tribute us. Uh, again, I'm not too sure about that. We ditched the evenly match. We're going to grab a kill, though, just because we can. And uh, we know that that's a Solemn Strike face down, but we sort of have to get around it somehow. Uh, we're going to use Gravekeeper's Trap, we're going to drop the Maxi, we're going to grab ourselves a Kelbeck, then we're going to use Keldo, ditching the Kelbeck to try and summon it. Our opponent Solemn Strikes this because if we put another monster on field, then we win the game instantly. So they're trying to slow us down as much as they can. Uh, Kelbeck then sending the top five from both players' decks to the graveyard. And eventually, basically, all we need to do is hit a exchange of the spirit. I don't believe we have one yet. 
No, we don't. We were also playing Anti-Spell Fragrance. That was pretty funny. And there are definitely uh, a bunch of different options you can do in terms of the interruptions. Again, our opponent just draws Call by the Grave. That is GG's. We don't drag it out here. Uh, we use Gravekeeper's Trap just to grab ourselves Commandant. We normal summon Commandant and we swing for game. Nice and easy. Didn't want to drag it out. We knew our opponent had lost. Being able to look at every card your opponent draws is also pretty dope, right? Because uh, you no longer need to guess what it is they've got. Well, you, you get the option to guess, and if you guess it right, then that card is sent to the graveyard. But even if you guess wrong, you still get to look at the card. That's still really good. So we knew that our opponent couldn't do anything there. Really solid. Let's get into game three. Already getting into game three here, we're going up against the Math Max. Now this one, as you can tell, was in a dual room. Uh, they are going to go Math Mech so, uh, addition here, so we're going to max see that, that's fine. Uh, slowing them down rightly, that means that anytime they summon, we're going to draw a card. They're still going to go in the Alan version. Now, bear in mind, our opponent knew what deck we were playing. Uh, so I think that they just figured that they were confident, right? They could just play around. They're going to grab themselves a circular for next turn. That is fine. Now, we don't have a ton that we can do with this hand, but we have more than enough. Midora's going to drop a Gido, summon itself out, grabbing us a Gravekeeper's Trap. Aikido gonna mill a bunch of cards, milling a Kelbeck, Kelbeck gonna mill a bunch of cards, we're gonna Gravekeeper's Trap here, dropping Exchange to grab ourselves a Commandant. Commandant's gonna grab us Necro Valley, so there you go. Exchange of the Spirits in the Graveyard, Necro Valley's on the field, Graveyard is off limits. All we need to do now is deal with the monster on the board, and we're in total control. Uh, we're gonna go Dryden here, Dryden popping the Alum version, which is awesome. We do get hit with Veiler though. Veiler is a little bit unfortunate, I would've liked to just pop that monster. But it did force him to use his Veiler, which is totally fine. Because we can just rank this guy up in the Borbo, attack directly, and then we got ourselves a Zeus. Zeus has been the main wing con so far, I would have to say. Which I'm not the biggest fan of, because it does also get rid of your field spell and your trap. However, those cards can be easily recycled. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely not the best. And again, Gravekeeper's Trap, we get a chance to look at the card he draws. We guess Circular, he draws Diameter. Um, but it, it is what it is. We're going to go Archfiend Eccentric, popping the field spell, but that does not uh, remove the Gravekeeper's Trap. Uh, he's going to tribute the Alan version here, summoning out a Diameter using Circular's effect, sending Sigma to the graveyard. Uh, we're going to drop Nibiru here um, to grab ourselves a Kelbeck, which is interesting. I can't remember why I did that. I, I remember at the time having a reason. Yeah, because we were just going to do this anyway. Yeah. Uh, they're going to go Sigma, we're going to go Midora. Midora's going to return the Sigma as well as the Trap and Midora, Necro Valley and the Commanded back into the deck. We just reset our entire combo. We just reset the whole thing. The whole thing just got reset. It's going to go Math Make Equation here, summoning out an Alan Bershin at 3,000 attack points. We figured that our opponent was going to try and Zeus us. Now, the Zeus would only have one material, so it wouldn't be super useful. Uh, but still, it's not really something I want to mess about with. That is totally fine. We draw into a Ghost Ogre, which isn't the most aggressive card in the world. But again, we've got two interruptions. Our opponent has zero cards, so we're not going to complain. We're just going to try and get as much damage across the board as we possibly can. Going into our opponent's turn here, they draw Cross Out Designator. They're going to activate it just out of desperation. They know that they can't win the game. They end their turn. And again, we don't drag it out. We're just going to go straight to the battle phase. We're going to swing and we're going to end the game. So there you go, I mean that's that's the power of shutting down a graveyard. There you go, Math Mech can't play really without their graveyard. Stop Super Factorial, it stops Sigma. Uh, for the most part it kind of stops Circular. Yes, they can summon Circular at the hand, but they also struggle then to basically revive something out. Um, it stops Diameter as well, stops Diameter's normal summon effect. There's a whole bunch of things in Math Mech that it completely shuts down. So again, really good game, uh, absolutely. And uh, let's get into game number four. Alrighty, so getting into the deck profile then. Uh, like I said, this isn't the most competitive list. I feel like there's still something missing in terms of the deck's endgame. I feel like that's where it is weakest at the moment. Uh, but the actual restrictions and everything about the deck seem to be working quite well. Um, first of all, we're going to strip it down to its actual core so you can see what we're dealing with. We've got the double effect veiler, double max C, double ghost ogre. We've got triple ash blossom. We've got Raigeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Super Poly, I, I, yeah, I mean, Super Poly, technically, yeah, uh, Cult by the Grieve, Cross Out Designator, and Double Infinite Impermanence. So you can see that there's quite a lot of space for you to do, oh, sorry, and Double Nibiru. 
So there's quite a lot of space for you to modify the deck and do sort of whatever you want with it. This, I would say, is pretty much the core of the deck. You could knock Exchange of Spirit down to one if you wanted to, uh, but it just gets a little bit harder than to get to the graveyard. So I think two copies is probably better uh, just to make sure you can get it into the graveyard much more consistently. Now, so that means basically 20 cards with which you can do whatever you want. You can, of course, run a hand trap lineup like we were doing. You can instead run a bunch of cards that are really solid going second if you really want to break boards and rely upon that. Uh, instead of that, you could use Floodgates. One that we saw a decent amount of success with was Anti-Spell Fragrance. And Skill Drain. Anti-Spell Fragrance and Skill Drain are really good ways of controlling the board. Now, they do hinder your ability to utilize your extra deck to any sort of great extent. However, they are definitely very good at controlling your opponent if you're looking for a more control-oriented approach. So there are definitely a whole ton of ways in which you can customize the deck to modify how it plays into its endgame, but what we're going to be focusing on in this video is going to be the engine itself, which is pretty much as simple as this. Uh, starting from the start, we've got the Gravekeeper's Commandant. Gravekeeper's Commandant basically discards itself to add Necro Valley, um, you only need to run one of this because it is searchable off of Gravekeeper's Trap, although if you wanted uh, Necro Valley more consistently, you could run more copies of it, absolutely. We've got the World Soul Carbon, which uh, after you normal summon it, you can tribute it to add any Earth Fairy monster from your deck to your hand. You can grab any of your Ishizu cards at all, which makes this guy pretty decent. It's basically an extra three copies of Mudora if you want to look at it like that, which means more copies of your Trap card. Speaking of Ishizu support, we're going to start off with Keldo. Keldo and Mudora both have a similar effect where you can discard another Earth Fairy monster in order to special summon themselves to the field, then they each gain an effect. Keldo will add Exchange of the Spirit or a card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, which is good to get this more consistently or to help you search for your Mudora. Mudora, however, will then, will instead of searching for a card, will place Gravekeeper's Trap face up onto your field, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, then they both have the, a similar effect as well, where you can target up to three cards in either player's graveyard, or up to five if Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, and you can return them back to the deck, and that's either player's grave. Makes it really, really good to counter graveyard synergy, although to be honest, uh, you'll be using this effect more in this deck to recycle your own cards rather than your opponent's, because the entire point behind this deck is to stop your opponent from utilizing their graveyard anyway. Uh, but it is a lot, it's, it's a, an extremely versatile effect. You will be using it in both ways. Um, so definitely very, very powerful cards. Definitely max these guys out in this version of the deck. You've got Kelbeck and Agito. These guys are the other power up. Whenever either of these guys are sent from the deck or hand to the graveyard, you will send the top five cards of both players' deck from the field to the grave. Then they each have a, a, basically a secondary effect where if Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard already, Kelbeck, after milling 5, will allow you to grab a trap card from your deck and add it to your hand. Uh, Agito will allow you to choose either player's deck and send an additional 5 cards from the top of it to the graveyard. Uh, then they both have an effect where if, if a card is sent from your opponent's hand or deck to the graveyard, you can special summon these cards from your hand. Kelbeck, when special summoned, will target a special summon monster your opponent controls and return it back to the hand. Agito will special summon a level 4 uh, Earth Fairy from your graveyard. So Kelbeck bounces, Agito is basically like a monster reborn. Kelbeck is definitely a lot more useful in, in the hand, but both of them have very similar effects in all other capacities. Foolish Burial, of course, Foolish Burial, sending your Agito or Kelbeck to the graveyard is amazing. And uh, basically just gets you free mills, which is awesome. Pont of Prosperity, being able to banish your extra deck to search for the top cards of your deck. Very useful considering you're not always going to utilize a lot of your extra deck every single game. You're typically going to go with one route to victory. So you're not going to need every single card. Definitely, definitely not. Prosperity is solid. Necro Valley, of course, mandatory at least one of. You can run two if you want, although you don't really need to because even if your opponent deals with it, you can simply shuffle it back into the deck off of your Medora or Keldo. So one of it is fine. Uh, and you can even shuffle back in your Gravekeeper's Commandant to make it searchable again. So absolutely. Then, oh, what it actually does though, let me clarify, uh, so long as this card's face up, any card that would move a card out of the graveyard, be it banish it back to hand, back to field, special summon, anything that moves a card out of the graveyard, or that changes types or attributes in the graveyard, are negated. Uh, so, that is really solid. Basically, so it stops your opponent from utilizing the graveyard, really. Ex Exchange of the Spirit is here for its name, its effect is garbage. 
um, you literally just need it for all of your additional effects, especially with our next card, the Gravekeeper's Trap. If Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, your opponent cannot activate the effects of cards in the graveyard or special summon monsters from the graveyard. While Necro Valley stops your opponent from moving cards out of the grave, it does not prevent them from activating the effects of cards in the graveyard, which affords your uh, opponent a lot of opportunities, especially considering you're going to be sending a bunch of cards from the deck to the graveyard. So while they may not be able to use their graveyard to the fullest, it's not exactly a dead resource. Whereas Gravekeeper's Trap makes it a dead resource. This basically shuts off the last possible avenue of usage from the graveyard, which is amazing. You can also once per turn discard a card to grab either a Gravekeeper's Monster or an Earth Fairy directly from your deck to your hand, being able to discard the likes of Exchange of Spirit, Agita or Kelbeck to gain massive advantage, and then search your deck for some of your more useful cards, like especially your Gravekeeper's Commandant or one of your other cards, Midora, Keldo, whatever it is you're going for. Basically means that Gravekeeper's Trap not only locks your opponent out of using their graveyard off of its own effect, it can also help you search your deck for Necro Valley for an additional layer of protection. And its last effect, which is kind of cool, uh, during your opponent's draw phase, before they draw a card, you get to declare a card name, look at the card your opponent draws, and if you call it right, send that card from their hand to the graveyard. Now that sounds pretty mediocre, because, you know, what's the chances of you guessing it right? Um... Either way, even if you don't guess it right, you get to see the card they draw, right? And that's just an extra effect on top of everything else it does. And trust me, it's little effects like that that really help you turn it around a game because knowledge is power. If you know what your opponent has, if you know what you're trying to play around, what you're playing against, then you're going to have a much, much easier time of manipulating the board and manipulating your opponent into playing down certain avenues which you can control. So even just that little bit of information is very handy. And on occasion, you're gonna get it right, right? It, it, it's bound to happen. If you know what deck your opponent's playing, and you will do, because remember, Agito and Kelbeck are sending cards from their deck to the graveyard, you'll be able to judge off of that what they're playing. And then that's gonna give you enough information to at least make a decent guess using your Gravekeeper's Trap. Or maybe you can just call for a card that you're especially afraid of. If you really don't want your opponent to draw a call by the grave, then no matter what you think, maybe at the top of the deck, just call a call by the grave, because even on the off chance that you're right, you're going to send it to the graveyard. So there's definitely a, a little bit of usage there about that last effect. It's that, I don't know, I like petty little effects like that. It's pretty cool. Getting into the extra deck, uh, we're running Super Poly, so we have a bunch of Super Poly targets. You could probably run more of them, to be honest, uh, but these are just some of the better ones. Uh, Earth Golem Adagnister is here for Sprite. You can fuse a Cyburst monster and a Link monster, combine their Mask Arena plus their Sprite Elf, and that shuts down their entire board. Uh, you got Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, Fusion of any two Dark Monsters, uh, Predator Plant Dragostopelia, Fusion of a, a Fusion Monster and a Dark Monster, uh, helps you counter Branded. And finally, uh, Predator Plant Trifu Vertum, which is a fusion of three Dark Monsters. Pretty decent cards all around. You can pick whatever targets you want. Uh, go nuts. We've got Abyss Dweller, a lot of our plays will revolve around rank 4 exceed, so Abyss Dweller is definitely a decent option. Another option you could go for is, uh, a really funny one, is the Utopia Double uh, OTK. That's one that we were initially playing. We ended up dropping it for consistency issues, um, but if you want to go down that avenue in terms of looking for your endgame, you definitely can, utilizing something like uh, number 39 Utopia Double. We ended up just going for Dweller and Super Poly instead, but definitely an option just throwing that out there dweller basically locks your opponent out of uh, activating effects in the graveyard so if you're not able to get your gravekeeper's trap set up dweller is a decent substitute then we've got these zodiac cards zodiac cards basically all just uh, exceed some of themselves on top of one another so you summon checking in using two level fours then you literally just stack the rest of them on top of each other you're either gonna end on dryden which will be able to detach a material to pop a card or you will end on Zeus, which will be able to detach two materials to wipe out the whole field. Depends on whether or not you're going first or second. Then you've got just a few generic Link Monsters. we got Cerberus to pop a card. Again, your deck struggles for an end game, so being able to destroy problematic monsters is very important. Uh, you've got Mask Arena, of course. Mask Arena plus Unicorn, one of the best combinations in the game for sure. Uh, being able to spin a card back to your opponent's deck. And finally, whatever sort of big boss monster you want, you need to have at least one boss monster as such, because your deck lacks such. Um, so initially we were using Avramax, but because Avramax needs monsters special summon from the extra deck, it wasn't always the most consistent thing to bring out. Uh, so I feel like Axis Code Talker may be just a little bit more consistent and more powerful, 
but again it is entirely up to you what you want to play and there it is again very short profile because most of this deck is like i said up to you and your discretion it is purely floodgates it is hand traps it is board breakers it is extra engines if you want to play something with a little bit more bite to it you can maybe mix dangers in with this uh just to give yourself a lot more attacking power if that's something you're into whatever it is you do with the last 20 slots this is basically just the format for the grave keeper issues you control you can build onto that format whatever you want uh, that's pretty much everything from me. If you've got this far into the video and you haven't liked the video or subscribed yet and you have enjoyed watching, I would advise you to do so, you know. Helps me out, helps you out, everybody wins basically. There's no real reason not to and with that I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.